So we are down here on the grid um, at the Mini Festival. Of course, we've got all of the Mini 7s line up behind us. But more importantly, um, the Mini Festival wouldn't be what it is today um, without Mini Spares. And it's a pleasure to say I'm joined on the grid by Justin Jeffrey, one of the directors at, at Mini Spares. Um, Justin, this has become a massive part of sort of Mini Motorsport globally. Um, how does it feel to be a part of that? Oh, we're honoured, oh, absolutely honoured. We've uh, we've been involved in, in motorsport since since Keith Dodd started the company 50 years ago. Um, it's, it's it's passionate. You know, you've seen the racing here. It's probably the best racing you'll see at Brands Hatch all year long. Um, yeah, so we're just honoured to be able to be part of it and, and help wherever we can. And obviously, the weather's been very kind to us this weekend. How does it feel to to see all of these minis in them? You know, like a very nice weather, and, and and we've seen how close the racing can be. Delighted. It's um, it's one of those things. If you're uh, if it's pouring with rain, it's not the same event. So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's great to be here and um, uh, in the sunshine, which doesn't happen that often in the UK. So, yeah, absolutely yeah, fantastic. fantastic. The racing's, the racing's been, been great, great, as I say, as I say. And, we're, and, we're, uh, we're and we're delighted, we're delighted to be here and, and, uh, and uh, be able to put this, on, put this on, on for everybody. And as you can, and see, can see, there's thousands, there's of, thousands of people here, here um, um, which is which is great. Which is great. Whenever you drive, we have a couple. Hello, sorry about that, uh, Jack's uh, just taking a moment out. So, Justin, where did we get to? Uh, we're just talking about how delighted we are to be here, uh, be able to put the show, show on for everybody, uh, the amount of people here, and uh, just, yeah, just delighted the weather's good, and uh, everyone's excited for the races to come. So you don't fancy having to go yourself, then? No, no, I'm, uh, these guys are far too good for me. I think I'd be at the back pedalling something and uh, trying to get out of the sand trap. I guess, I guess from your side, from your side of things, 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 it must be quite fun to see the cars going around with all the parts that you supply. That's quite cool. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, most of the people here we know quite well, um, especially after an event like this when you see bumpers hanging off and uh, uh, and panels beaten up and broken. It's, uh, it's yeah, brings brings a tear to my eye. What's been your favourite race so far of the weekend? Oh, I, th I think the Historics is always a great race. The, the cars are prepared so beautifully. They look great. Uh, and it, it just takes you back to when the cars were... Uh, performing as they as they did back in the 60s and the 70s and and, and winning races, winning races. And, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah that's that, my favorite that's race, my race now you've been around the mini scene for, for probably longer, probably than, me, longer than me a fair few years, <laughs> fair few years now years. how do you think things are changing i think it's just getting it's, it's getting, getting bigger and bigger, bigger people are more passionate now um you know it surprises me every, every year that the, the, the amount of product that we sell we're still developing new product which is amazing you know, the car's 65 years old we're still finding ways to make the cars go faster make them more reliable uh, yeah it's incredible it just keeps going from strength to strength and i think the more you're able to produce more parts it keeps them going Absolutely, yeah. There's lots of bits that are getting harder and harder to find. Uh, Mark One blocks. We, we, we're producing those. We're doing cylinder heads. We're doing all the stuff that needed to keep the cars on the road. We're trying to we're trying to produce, trying to produce at, at, at a price at that a people price can afford. And it's not just, it's here, not in just here in the UK, is it? These parts are going all the way around the world, which you kind of think is of the Mini as a British car, but they do go literally all the way around the world. Oh, absolutely. 60 60 plus percent of our business is export. So yeah, there's there's cars in every corner of the world and places that you would never expect to find. Yeah, they, so, yeah, they, they, they found their they way found around the world, the world quite, quickly. quite quickly. We saw you at uh, Germany, uh, Germany recently, recently for the recently. IMM. IMM. Down in the paddock, Down in the paddock there's the, the stand, stand for the, the IMM, IMM 2025. 2025. Yeah, correct. Yeah, 2025. It's the uh, it's, it's Mini Spares 50th anniversary, so we're going to be there in a big way, hopefully uh, raffling another car for... Uh, variety charity um, so yeah come come down 2025 it'd be a great event so you're gonna build the mini on the day yep yep three days we'll get the car built from from nuts and bolts to a, to a working car hopefully awesome well I'll be there <laughs> hopefully a few few guys here in the crowd are gonna be there as well fantastic yeah looking forward to seeing everybody well, thanks Justin and should we go for a wonder we're doing that you coming with me 
Let's go. So I did prime Joe Thompson. Go and find him. Sorry, I forgot my back to the camera. Hello, Joe. We are live. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. I'm soaking up the sun, loving it. So you had a win yesterday. Uh, yes, we did. It was, um, we were just about to run out of the end. It was getting a bit close with the safety car. Uh, but yeah, we were just managed to do that. So for the people watching, this is the 998cc based Mini Formula. How are they to drive? Um, I think watching it is, is usually quite good for people. They just find it quite entertaining. But obviously driving it is just a completely different ball game. Um, yeah, they're loose, they move around. Um, not a lot of power, but enough to have a bit of fun. Uh, and yeah, I think it's the sort of thing you can't really put it into words. I think once you've been beyond the wheel and you know yourself, you've had a crank in them, uh, and they're just something else. I mean, you know, having been fortunate enough to jump behind the wheel of quite a few different cars, the sort of thing that we always come back to. And you look at most of the names on the grid, um, anyone that's been up there and been raised promotion, they always go back to the same so. How fast are you going? What's the maximum speed around here in a Mini 7? Do you know what? I've never even had a speedo. The maths. The maths would state you're probably doing just over 100, um, but yeah, I don't run a speedo, so uh, I'm just going to say it's about 500 mile an hour. It must feel like that. I've been in the Mini doing 70 down the motorway and it feels like 200 miles an hour, so 200 miles an hour around here must, must feel pretty good. Yeah, close to the floor and, you know, centimetres away from the cars, it really heightens it up. And, and that's the big thing about this club is the fact that everybody's so close. Um, the racing is usually really, really respectful, clean, um, and that's what brings people back. Brilliant. Thanks, Joe. So that's Joe in car number 80, who's in P2 for this race. Got a win yesterday. I want to go and see Ross Billison, who's over the other side. So in the number three car, just pretending I'm not here. Can you talk, Ross? Yeah. Hey, Ross. So Ross Billison, you are one of our championship leaders at the moment. Yeah. Yes, I am. That was it. Are you going to talk a bit more than that? No, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's going well this season. I've been on the podium every race. I've just got to keep going. Just got to keep trying to beat Jack. One of your more your local more tracks, local you enjoy coming around here? Yeah, yeah, it's just down the road for us. Yeah, yeah, so. Plus and easy. What have you got to do today? <laughs> Beach Joe. <laughs> so that's Joe in the car, <laughs> 80. And you've also got Mike Jordan on the front row as well. He's going to be pretty fast today, I would think. Yeah, he's always fast. He's, uh, he's good fun, though, Mike. But, uh, yeah, he's fast. And obviously Damien's coming through now as well. So it should be good. It should be good battle, I think. If I can hang on to him. How long have you been racing, Ross? About 10, 11 years now. So yeah, so good. Good. Finally, finally, right at the front, so it's good to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last season was good. Obviously, we finished third, but um, yeah, we're, we're, we're really pushing to try and win it this year. So yeah, we're good. Some best luck. We look out for you. As we keep wandering down the grid. You'll see we've got two distinct grids here. So we've got the mini sevens at the front, which have got the red header stickers, and uh, at the back we've got the green Mini 7 S class. So the Mini 7 S class is quite a standard 1275 based car and the Mini 7s with the red header stickers are the fully race tuned cars with the dog engagement gearboxes. You'll hear the straight cut drop gears, really lightweight flywheels, more racing. So a bit more like the Mini Miglias. We're on historic spec tyres, a little bit less power and uh, someone who always scares me slightly when I go live it would be Adrian. So, Hi Adrian, you've been around the paddock quite a long time. You having a good weekend? Good afternoon Stephen, absolutely wonderful weekend. Aaron is doing his best to race two cars this afternoon. Um, we've just rebuilt the first one, so that's up and running again. So out in this seven, and then he'll be out in the middle of I think straight after this one, or if not one race between. So this is uh, Aaron Smith, who's just behind us here in the, in the yellow car. Yeah, Graham Davis has asked Aaron to drive it this weekend, just to show what a seven can do. We'll see what happens. So we saw Aaron out earlier in the Mini Miglia race. Is he having a good time in the seven? Uh, he's enjoying the seven, yeah. It's a totally different car, totally different driving style, but you know what he's like. If, it's, if he can drive something, he will drive it. Thanks very much. Didn't swear, that was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I have a quick word with Spencer Wonstall before he puts his crash helmet on. Coming in the red car here, sponsored by Mini Spares. I said I'd get you at some point, Spencer. How are you? All good. How are you? Nice and warm on the grid here. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Um, good day to be here at the local track, Brands Hatch. Um, massive crowd. 
having everyone come in on the pitch, pitch day. It was great. It was pretty, pretty, pretty experience. experience. Um, um, lovely to see lovely the to see classic mini scenes really alive and kicking after all these years. So you're back here in eighth. Seventh. Seventh on the grid. Does that make much difference in terms of you know aerodynamics? You'll soon be catching up the guys at the front. Uh, yeah, I'd like to think um, by the Paddock Hill Bend, I'll be in the lead. So yeah, all good. All right. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Cheers. There you go. I think we've got a little bit of time left. They haven't got their crash helmets on just yet. We keep going. Yeah, keep wandering down. So we've got um, Gareth Hunt here in the uh, Tiger car. Hey Gareth. Hi Stephen. You got your helmet on, so it might sound a little bit muffled on the uh, mic, but we'll try our best. So, you having a lovely weekend? Yeah, it's awesome. It's, uh, the grid walk was a nice, uh, nice touch. I hope everybody enjoyed it. It's nice to see so many people come down, see the cars in place on the grid. It's quite unusual, isn't it, for us? A few unusual things like having to sign autographs. Yeah, Gareth Hunt, superstar. So, in the number 37 car, good luck. Now, if we can, I'd like to try and breach this gap so we have 10 seconds between the two grids here racing is equally as exciting front to the back and we've got some really quick drivers coming through in the mini 7s class now so we try and find fraser ah let's go and speak to matt Eyre. so matt in the gray car number 700 hello matt you having a great weekend so far yeah, it's been all right. Been uh, it's been feisty, but it always is. So uh, been good fun, good, good battles. Tell us about your car. What's what's under the bonnet? Uh, so it's a twelve seven five with twelve thou oversizes, just under one point three. But they're pretty standard with uh, a normal um, gearbox in them as well. So. so you should notice when the cars go along the straight, they they sound slightly different to the S class at the front. The, sorry, the Mini Seven at the front. Yeah, the Mini Sevens were much much higher, and uh, you can hear that sort of. Uh, it's the straight cut gears gives it a nice uh, race sound. But you'll probably start to come up on some of the Mini 7s as the race progresses. I know you guys at the front here at the S Class are really competitive. Yeah, yeah we'll definitely try and try to get in the mix as it's a safety car. Then, uh, yeah, it's just going to be one giant line of minutes. Are you going to have troubles with heat today? Quite warm? Uh, yeah, it should be. It'll get quite warm. If we're in the tie, then uh, they definitely get quite warm. So you might see a few people just grabbing gulps of fresh air. So just kind of darting out slightly. You're not going for an overtake, you're just trying to get a bit more cool air. Yeah, if, you, if you're too far back and uh, you, you're sat at the tie, you just want to get some, some fresh air over the rad, make sure the engine takes nice and cool. And you're pretty much favourite at the moment for the championship. I shouldn't say that before the race, should I? But you're doing well so far in the points. Uh, that's a bold statement, but anything can happen. And uh, all these boys are really quick, so uh, any of them could win. Nice to see. We've got Phil Anning there in the number 717. He's, he's new out this time as well, so he's, he's on the pace straight away. Yeah, he's on the pace straight away and very, very quick. I think he, uh, he qualified second and third on, the, on his first time out, so it's definitely worth watching. Brilliant. All right, well, good luck in the race. And try and get a word with Fraser, who's just suiting up. Hello, Fraser. How are you? Not bad. Can't complain. How are you? Can you explain these graphics on the side of your car? Um... Well, when we got invited to Fruxton, we obviously got the old man knows Dave. And, uh, we just thought it would be a good opportunity to take this. So, what's, what's happening here, Andy, on your T-shirt? What's this? 2007 Mini Miglia Champion. Uh, yes, 2007 Mini Miglia Champion uh, was supposed to be an NDF Owens, but he lost it. So, it was me. And I beat him in Wales, which is even better. So it may be built in Wales and beaten in Wales. It's good to see you don't hang on to these things, you know. It's no, it's because I stopped racing so long ago, I have to hold on to something. I saw you racing earlier this year. What's happened? Um, just decided to just step back a little bit. Um, let Fraser have a chance. Um, so I'm probably, probably a bit too quick for him. And let him have the fast car, fast engine and the fast race suit. See it quite often, father and son, daughter and father on the grid. It's quite nice to have a, you know one whole family racing. I'm not his daughter. <laughs> Are you not? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. 
We had quite a lead in the first race yesterday. Hoping to repeat that again today? Yeah, if we can be as lucky. Um, I think I think yesterday was luck. Like, like we broke away out of Grand Hill. And once, it, once you've broke the toe in these cars, as you know, it's, uh, it makes your job a little bit easier. So yeah, we hope for the same, but I don't think with Massey, the uh, bearded chaos next to me, I think, uh, I think it'll be close fight. It's quite, quite close racing, but also quite fair. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've, I mean, if you watch back Froxton, me and Massey spent 20 minutes it's going door to door, bump to bump, and I don't think we touched once. So, um, yeah, it's a great place to go racing. It keeps things cheap if you don't have shunts all that often. And so, yeah, can't complain. Awesome. All right, have fun. Nice to speak to you, Fraser. So, that's Fraser in number 725, the David Addison fan club. So, have a quick word with. One of our newer drivers to the grid. Well, I'd say you have been on the grid before. Yeah, I have been on the grid. Quite an experienced mini racer. Phil Anning here. Hi, how are we doing? Very well. Saw so your live coverage from yesterday. That was, yeah, it's, it's played back okay. That's it. Oh, good. That's it. Oh, good. Yeah, natural. How does it feel being back on the Mini 7 grid? It's really good. It's really good. It's really close. And it's really tough. Um, um, and I definitely need to practice. But no, I mean, but I'm no, loving it. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. So you've raced, you've, you've got Riley Elf, haven't you? So you've got a historic <laughs> race mini that you've been racing around Goodwood and Masters, etc. How does that compare to this car you've got now? Um, um, the handling is not indifferent, but the historic cars have got a bit more power. Um, so they're similar, they're just a little bit faster. They, these are quite loose, aren't they? You see them sliding around quite a lot. How does that feel to drive when you're sliding through the corners sideways? Um, it, it keeps you on your toes, that's for sure. Um, and when you're in the thick of it, you've got to be very careful. You know, it is, it is, it is alive underneath you. But it's, it's a lot of fun, and everybody's, you know, they give you just about enough room. We'll get to the end, that'll be good. That'll be good. That'll be good. I think one of the questions a lot of people have is to see the cars going round on three wheels. Why are you on three wheels rather than using all Four tyres. You're not tyre saving. No, <laughs> no. There's no tyre saving taking place. Um, the geometry is key to making these things fast. Um, and the only way they do really go fast is by having the rear end quite lively, making the turn from the rear. Um, so halving the grip by removing one from the ground. Uh, so you keep the front wheels scrabbling away on the tarmac keeping it gripping on the front to stop it pushing on understeering in the corners yeah absolutely absolutely you've got it there you go well we've got that bit but let's see let's see we'll know what happens in about half an hour's time so you this is third here on the grid isn't it it is yeah yeah so the qualifying for today's race is based on the lap times from yesterday yes it is yeah yeah so although we didn't finish as high up as this yesterday we turned it fairly decent and you're doing just under one minute to get around here yeah they are they're in the 59s mini miglias are more like 50 54 and then the fastest mini in the world right down to about 50 seconds are they yeah, yeah, they're fast. Yeah. They're fast. They're fast. Okay. But just as fun. So you best get your crash helmet on. Yeah, it sounds like they're going to call us out. And then um, we shall get off the grid before they start up. So yeah, we've got just a few minutes to go, and then we've got another very exciting race for you Mini 7 and Mini 7 S Class here at Brands Hatch. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed your lunch break here at Brands Hatch for the annual mini festival for 2024. Uh, and now we're ready to go for the afternoon action with six races to look forward to. A majority of those will be mini races with the addition of the second MSVR all comers race to look forward to as well. The countdown is now on. We've just been given the uh, five minute board, which means the cars will very shortly be heading off onto their formation lap. So let's run you through how this race will line up for the Dunlop Mini Challenge supported by Mini Sevens, uh, Mini Spares, sorry, for the Sevens. And it's gonna be number one, Mike Jordan, who finds himself on pole position. Number 80, Joe Thompson, is gonna be alongside. The second row then lines up with number 29, which is Damien Harrington. He'll be joined by number three, which is Ross Billison. The third row then sees number 21, which is Aaron Smith. Alongside him, number 20 is Darren Thomas. The fourth row will see number 73, which is Spencer Wanstall, with number 38, Stephen Hopper, on the outside. The fifth row will then line up with number 37, Gareth Hunt, and on the 10th place of the grid will be number 16, 
which is Andrew King. Then we move to the rear of what's going to be the uh, Mini 7s. That's going to be Nigel Davies in car number 26 and number 14, Jamie Payne. Uh, then we have a gap before we see where the majority of the field finds itself for this weekend for the 7S class. And on uh, pole position for that one is going to be the 725 machine of Fraser Hack. On the second row, number 700 is uh, Matthew Ayres and 717, which is uh, Philip Annim. Uh, then behind that we have 796 which is Michael Winkworth joined by number 741 which is Joel Rem. Then further back from them we see 746 which is Oliver Burkett with 707 Matthew Page. The next row lines up with 789 which is Arnold Duncan and 711 Giles Page. Behind them 736 is Bertie Willard with 797 which is Jack Vanner. Then behind them, 713 is Lee Pullman, joined by 777, which is Dave Rees. Then onto the next row, it's going to be 750, which is James May, and 748, Mal Dickinson. Behind them, 712 is John Hobbs, joined by 733, which is Alex Watson. Then onto the penultimate row of the grid, 778, which is Kate Fraser and Kerr, with 765, Callum Perfect. And on the back row of the grid will be number 788, which is Rob Perry. So it gives us a full grid once again for the Dunlop Mini 7s. This is our first race of the day. So if you weren't here with us yesterday, uh, you wouldn't have seen these uh, drivers out, but they are all geared up and ready to go. And it uh, seems like they all enjoyed that uh, grid walk as they were famous for, for half an hour as they signed programs and uh, got to talk to all of you lovely lot who made it down onto the grid to soak up that atmosphere uh, from the Mini 7s. So what are the Mini 7s and what are the Mini 7s's well back in the day uh, more than half a century ago the mini 7 challenge was for the bob fox trophy which has been providing great motor racing at an affordable price for many many years now as we know uh, much may have changed since the first ever 850 cc formula mini 7 race here at brands hatch back in what was uh, april 1966 uh, but nowadays we have the one litre mini 7s which still provides superb entertainment for driver and spectator alike and uh, they do stick to the tarmac like a proverbial go-kart but they can uh, sometimes uh, most times get up onto two wheels uh, starting behind the sevens we do have the milder tuned 1275 cc s class which offers a more standard budget introduction class uh, where hopefuls will be looking to get onto the motor racing ladder and uh, work their way up at some stage into the mini seven so the mini sevens will find that the head of the order the first kind of 10 to 12 will be those and then as we said the mini seven s's will be the ones that follow further back so we're very shortly to get this formation lap underway as we headed in towards brands hatch it was ross billison who was leading the championship he had acquired after the uh, first 10 or so races of the season 169 points he was 14 ahead of spencer wanstall and joe thompson after a well-deserved victory yesterday was on 151 points so he will be very much looking to uh, try and take the championship lead away as we leave Brands Hatch this weekend after what will be the three races we have. Uh, fourth place, Damien Harrington. He is on 141 points, but didn't have the best of days yesterday, unfortunately. And Darren Thomas, as he came home in fifth place, he ran fifth in the championship on what is 98 points. But a bit like the Melias, we do drop the worst three scores of the season. So your kind of worst results can get dropped if they haven't gotten your way across the course of the year. So for Joe Thompson, going to try and find himself very much back in the equation he's only had really one poor round so far uh, this year that was a non-point score for joe thompson back at round eight which was uh, a couple of meetings ago on the support bill of the british touring car championship at thruxton but uh, joe thompson has bounced back uh, nicely in the last two meetings actually uh, two races at least one yesterday with the first place and also got the uh, first place in the round before this at Anglesey on the coastal circuit so he's actually on a, a good run of form at the minute and uh, trying to do what he can to stay ahead of Spencer Wanstall who finished sixth in yesterday's race and Ross Billison who just managed to scrape himself through onto the podium so he'll be looking to do his best in this second race which is again over 20 minutes as the cars work the way on this formation lap down through Graham Hill Benz number one Mike Jordan is there he did the quickest time in yesterday's race so that gives him the pole position for today 58.835 it was fractionally quicker than Joe Thompson who as we said went on to win the race by three hundredths of a second so not much to choose between them uh, whatsoever and it was that meeting at uh, Thruxton when Mike Jordan was head and shoulders above everybody else they are pretty much the only two races he's done so far this year he was entered at Donington Park back in March but had to withdraw from uh, those two races but uh, Mike Jordan 
when he has been out there, he has been on the podium. So uh, let's see if he can follow second place yesterday up with a, uh, a win today. He's going to have some tough opposition, as we said, because look back to row two, where you'll find Damien Harrington and also championship leader Ross Billison. We mentioned row three, Aaron Smith and uh, Darren Thomas, and then Spencer Wanstall and Stephen Hopper on the fourth row. And we can't discount these 7Ss because they give us just as exciting racing uh, with uh, around about 15 to 20 cars on that grid here this weekend. Fraser Hack will go off the uh, front in the 725 machine. His time yesterday was a 59.769. He has been quick across the course of yesterday. And uh, Fraser Hack, another man who hasn't really done most of the races this year, uh, but again, when he has been out there, he has featured on the podium uh, more than once. So uh, Fraser Hack now with his third win of the season, looking to try and keep Matthew Ayres and Philip Annam behind him and Michael Winkworth could be another man who finds himself towards the podium by the end of the 20 minutes. So we'll see how it all shapes out as the sevens now work their way back to their positions on the grid. The first few rows of the 7S is now coming into position as well. And as soon as the last few cars on the grid have found that position, we'll get the green flag. And as we said, the afternoon action will be underway here at Brands Hatch for the 2024 edition of the Mini Festival. But who is going to make the best of the starts? We've mentioned on multiple occasions so far this weekend, pole position is not always the best place to be. So let's see if Mike Jordan can turn it into the lead in towards Paddock Hill Bend. We now do get the green flag from the back of the grid. The five second board is held aloft and the red lights come on then for this Mini 7 race, which gets underway now as the lights go out. And number 20 doesn't go anywhere, unfortunately. So Darren Thomas is stuck on the grid. Hopefully all the 7Ss will be able to see him as they get underway very shortly. But down towards Paddock Hill Bend, it won't be Mike Jordan that leads the way. He's already down into second, make that third place because Damien Harrington goes round his outside as well. And he's got to be careful that Ross Billison doesn't try and get his nose to the inside up towards Druids also. The 7Ss are yet to get underway. Hopefully they will do shortly. But in fact, we're going to have the yellow flag just to warn drivers of that number 20 machine and are we going to have possibly a safety car or maybe a red flag yes we are because the 7s's hadn't got away from the grid so halfway around were the sevens and the 7s's hadn't gone so in the interest of safety it's uh, it's a good call actually because you don't want to have as we said 20 cars working their way down towards the number 20 machine which some of them won't be able to see but let's try again. 20 minutes of mini racing coming up. The mini sevens will go off first and a slight delay before we see the seven S's. The red lights are about to come on because the five second board has been held aloft and pulled back in. So the red lights come on and let's give it another go. 20 minutes of racing to look forward to. Lots of wheel spin there from Joe Thompson and Mike Jordan does get a better start. So he'll just about hold the inside line down toward Paddock Hill Bend. But again, uh, Joe Thompson does have the swooping line round the outside and also does Ross Billison. So still two go past. Damien Harrington wasn't one of those this time as the 7Ss are released from the grid as well. So it's going to be Fraser Hack that leads the pack down towards Paddock. Phil Annin has got himself up into second place. He might even get to the lead actually as they work their way in towards Paddock Hill Bend. No, it will be Fraser Hack in the uh, David Addison livery car once again this weekend. And Phil Annin now under attack on the run up towards Druid. So in what was an attacking manoeuvre is now going to be a defensive mover to try and hold on to that second place as they turn their way through Druids and down towards Graham Hill Bend for the sevens they're on their way up towards McLaren already and it will be Joe Thompson that heads the field Ross Billiton second Mike Jordan has now been passed by Damien Harrington so uh, Mike Jordan already down into fourth position and onto his tail comes that yellow machine of number 21 which is Aaron Smith so the completion of the first lap to be done and already for Joe Thompson he has got a slight buffer over Ross Billison, but don't expect this to last for too long as Mike Jordan is already retaliating down on the run in towards Paddock Hill Bend. But again, Damien Harrington at this point of the race is too strong to get past. So it's the six out front for the sevens as they work their way in towards Druid's corner. Harrington to the inside briefly of Ross Billison there, but he backed out of it at the uh, very last minute and uh, you don't really want to make contact with uh, other competitors. We have had some really clean racing this weekend. And uh, mini racing at its best is absolutely phenomenal to watch as Damien Harrington almost loses it there coming out the exit of Graham Hill Bend so he might have just lost a car length or so to the number three machine of Ross Billison as they turn away now from Surtees in towards McLaren and it's definitely the top six that have pulled away from the seventh place car now of number 38 which is Steve Hopper so he is a little bit distant in that seventh position and then the next three cars round out the uh, sevens as they work their way on towards Clearways 
and Clark Kerr for the second time. For the 7Ss, it is Fraser Hack that does still just about lead the way from the 700 machine of Matthew Ayres. He is uh, going to try and get himself a little bit higher uh, up the order in these early stages. Matt Ayres, who finished third yesterday and leads the championship. So just keep it calm. Don't try too much. But Matt Ayres already looking to try and make a move on Fraser Hack in towards Paddock Hill. Ben, we've got a double wave yellow because there is a car, uh, yeah, that has pulled off just on the exit paddock will bed to the inside on the grass so that is very much out of harm's way and the driver already out in the car and uh, hopefully those double wave yellows will be retracted once the marshals are clear of the car as well so uh, nothing major to worry about as uh, the driver uh, walks away quite close to the paddock there if he just hops over the uh, the barrier he'll be back into the paddock under the circuit so uh, uh, that is good news for him. So the leader's back onto the start-finish line with Joe Thompson still out front. Ross Billison looks to be uh, about the same gap behind as last time round. Half a second it was, and I think that will be recorded as pretty much the same. In fact, less than four tenths of a second now as they go into the double-waved yellow flag zone. I um, just wonder if that's another wheel that's come off the car there because it looks very much like a wheel in the gravel trap on the outside of Paddock Hill Bend. So if it has... Uh, come off and then that driver's done well to pull the car to the inside pretty quickly and we'll try and work out who that is in due course once all the field has come through leaders down towards Graham Hill Bend Joe Thompson's gap is continuing to be cut here so on the move is Ross Billison as the 7S is worked the way in towards Druids and Fraser Hack who again a bit like Mike Jordan when he's when he has appeared on the, uh, the circuit he's done very well to, to lead races and the majority of the time win them as well so Hack leaves Ayres in the seven S's you've got Phil Adding there in third place Michael Winkworth in the blue and pink machine in fourth position and then the 789 machine is another one who's just a little bit distant at the minute that's Arnold Duncan in fifth position who leads the next train on the way through McLaren so those leaders turn away now to the completion of the next lap and the one that we have lost, just trying to work out, it might be the number 37 machine actually that has disappeared, Gareth Hunt, because he's way down the order and looks like he has got um, an issue. So yeah, I think it's Gareth Hunt that's pulled off over there at Paddock Hill Bend. Uh, Cross the line, got some good fighting going on between the 7Ss once again. That is going to be for, uh, where is it? It's fifth place, isn't it, in the 7Ss. So the car we just mentioned, Arnold Duncan, uh, trying to keep about at the minute the car of what will be the 746 machine. So uh, Oliver Burkett from about seventh on the grids. He is in that battle at the minute as Fraser Hack now has to go for a, a more defensive line on the run down towards Graham Hill Bend, but I think he was secure in that place nonetheless. So we didn't really have to work, worry about Matt Ayres for the time being as they accelerate now on towards the left-hander at Surtees. Out front, still at the minute, Joe Thompson that leads, and he is starting to build the gap once again because Ross Billison has a Damien Harrington to worry about because Damien goes to the outside. This is putting pressure on the second place car which is just delaying all of them in trying to catch up with the race leader and Mike Jordan almost had a nibble there at the rear of Damien Harrington's car he tries for the inside line that is closed off very quickly goes back to the outside but that is also uh, closed off by the same car uh, so Mike Jordan wherever he tries to put his little mini uh, doesn't want to go through a gap does it but now this might be his best opportunity he's going to be on the outside line though down towards Grand Hill Bend he's after slightly wide might have been a little bit of contact between the two of them there so that will now give the chance uh, for Aaron Smith to try and draw alongside in the number 21 machine and unfortunately we're going to lose another one from the sevens because Nigel Davies in car number 26 has also uh, pulled off the circuit and is that in the same place as Paddock Hill Bend where we had the yellow flag previously uh, not too sure but that car has disappeared out of this race so through we come then with six laps to be completed joe thompson no real surprise is the fastest man out there 59.321 he has all of that clear air that he can use to his best advantage and he still only leads by eight tenths of a second so although these uh, drivers are fighting for second position they are not massively dropping back from the race leader damien harrington might have a chance at ross billison up into Druids, no, he weaves one way then the other, but again, he's in that kind of pack where if you make a mistake or you go for a move and it doesn't work, you're very quickly then going to come under attack from the car behind, which is still Mike Jordan, who tries exactly the same move as a lap ago, and it didn't work that time, it doesn't work this time either, so Mike Jordan has to try, think, maybe do something a little bit different, try and catch the third place car off song and maybe spring a surprise somewhere else on the circuit, which might be right now, because again, he looks to the inside in towards the exit of McLaren and though he's kind of sending all these moves on the back of Damien Harrington uh, he's not actually coming under too much pressure from Aaron Smith behind him but uh, it won't 
probably last too long until Aaron Smith will find his way through. But the gaps now just start to eke out between the top five as they approach the dip in the road in towards Paddock Hill Bend. As they do that, the 7S's work their way towards the end of another lap. And it's still Fraser Hack, no change, a bit like the 7s from his race lead. But again in the toe, Matt Ayres here might be able to work his way through. He might not want to. He might want to sit there for the majority of the race and try and do something on the last lap because as long as you can stay with your competitors around you uh, and you can be there on the last lap, you can always spring a surprise as they run towards the chequered flag. So Fraser Hack works his way in towards Druids. He's got some sevens up the road from him and they did manage to do this yesterday. They found themselves in the uh, sevens quite quickly so they will be looking to move up the overall order once again. Uh, behind the top four in seven S's, we still have the Battle Royale between these four cars, which are going to be uh, firstly led by the 746 machine of Oliver Burkett. He has been chased hard by what's going to be Arnold Duncan, who is now down into uh, 15th place overall and sixth within the class. And then also with them as well is the 707 machine, uh, which is going to be that of Matthew Page. And then we've got one further one to add to that mix, which is the 741 machine, which sees that of Joel Wren. So we've got four for the lead in 7S's, four for fifth place in the 7S's. Uh, which one do we look at? I think we need to look at the one behind because they are now side by side up across the start finish stripe. And it will be on this occasion, Arnold Duncan that goes through in towards Paddock Hill Bend. So the brown mini is through. There might be another one to take a place away as well from the green and white machine, which is that of Ollie Burkett. So he drops two positions in the space of just the one corner. So Fraser Hack works his way through, still in the 7S lead just about, but he's now under attack from, well, everyone pretty much, because down the inside line uh, will come the 717 machine. A bit too quick, though, manages to hold on to it. Matthew Ayres is in the wrong place. This is out very wide onto the kerb. So it's uh, had a real shake up now within this class as Philip Annin was the one who was up the inside or tried to be at Fraser Hack, but just couldn't quite control the car. Uh, with that, he then ran wide. I think Fraser Hack saw that coming and kind of just stepped aside and let him go. Uh, and then on the exit of the corner, it came back into his favor. So Hack now ahead of Annin. Then we've got uh, Michael Winkworth, who's moved up into third place. And the one who lost out during that was going to be Matthew Ware. So the 7S Championship leader prior to this weekend is now the man down in fourth place, who'd be shuffled off the podium very quickly. And behind them, who have we got? We've got the number 16 machine by the looks of it. So that is one who runs within the seven. So Andrew King is uh, trying to do something about this, but doesn't really need to, as now Philip Allen tries to go around the outside in towards Paddock Hill Bend for the 7S lead. And we've got another one, unfortunately, in the gravel trap, which is over at Clearweight and Clark Curve. And very quickly, that looked to be the car of Jack Fanner, uh, the 797 car. So uh, how he's got there, I'm not too sure. Might have run wide, he might have been pushed wide, but. Um, didn't quite catch the beginning of that one but we can see he's stuck in the gravel trap so with nine minutes to go joe thompson's lead is quite substantial in many terms uh, but that could all uh, be about to change because if we do get safety car the field will be bunched back together once again as across the line for the seven second place ross billison uh, still just ahead of and uh, sorry mike jordan not andrew jordan he's normally racing but mike jordan it is for this weekend and we do have now a safety car as predicted with that car of Jack Banner off over there at Clearway. So uh, we reset once again. And just when Joe Thompson thought it was getting quite comfortable, um, that's now not the case because time will continue to stick away under the safety car. And it all depends how long it takes for that car to be removed of Banner over there at Clearways. But uh, I think we're still going to have a good five minutes or so left on the clock. So it's not all wrapped up just yet for Joe Thompson as the safety car picks up the leader down on the Cooper straight and we do have the telehandler quite close to the car of Jack Vanner so uh, 
it might be able to be lifted to the circuit pretty quickly or if not it'll be taken to a place of safety behind the armco at the same speed i'd say so um, yes yeah, it's, it's an easy one to to recover from from where we're looking at anyway so he is off over there so as we run under safety car with just under eight minutes to go it is joe thompson in car number eight that leads the way second place for number three is ross Gillison. third place number one is mike jordan fourth place then for number 29 is that of Damien Harrington and then behind fifth place we have the number 21 machine which is Aaron Smith and then behind them we still have the sevens with number 73 in sixth position that's Spencer Wanstall and then seventh place for number 38 as we run under safety car for Stephen Hopper then we move into the seven S's so it just shows how quick they've made their way through the sevens and that is still headed by Fraser Hack in the 725 machine second within that class in ninth place overall is 717 which is Phil Annin and then Michael Winkworth completes the 7S podium in third in that class and 10th overall Michael Winkworth and then fourth place and 11th overall is going to be Matt Ayres in car number 700 so that's how the two classes look and hopefully now the 7S's uh, as they get bunched up with the 7s won't be too disrupted by this and uh, kind of have the 7s in their way when they have their own fight when the green flag waves once again because we've seen the, the speed of Fraser Hack which has been pretty quick. 59.9 is his best lap of the race. The quickest of those ahead of him in terms of the sevens, well, they're on 59.7s and 59.3. So they're only kind of three tenths of a second slower than the sevens ahead of them. So that could be a little bit disruptive, as we said, for the seven S's, but um, hopefully they won't come into too much contact with each other. Uh, Jack Banner's car is almost clear of the gravel trap, so tremendous work once again from the recovery team. And although it's not quite there, uh, the race officials are confident that we can go back to green flag racing this time round because the BMW safety car lights have been switched off. So Joe Thompson now does become the effective race leader and safety car at the same time. And it's up to him to decide when he wants to go. He can go now, he can go later and go right towards the line, but it's entirely up to him once he goes he does have to go, which he now has on the run towards McLaren. So Thompson leads, Billison leads Jordan in the top three. And this is, in fact, what we saw yesterday on the safety car. Seven S's did decide to just back off because they know they don't want to catch up with the sevens because that would really hamper the leader in that class. So Fraser Hack gives himself a little bit of uh, a gap, which you're allowed to do. The officials allow that to happen with the two separate classes. And off we go once again with now five and a half minutes left on the clock. Joe Thompson leads him into pause, Paddock Hill Bend. And already, actually, although we've just restarted, he has gapped Ross Billison already. So he built the gap, not to the extent he had before the safety car, but still it's a three or four car length over number three. Then Mike Jordan still there in third place in number one. And again, it's the top five in the sevens that have already pulled away from the rest of the pack. So down to Grand Hill Bend we now go. Mike Jordan a little bit, again, unsettled through the corner as they work their way on towards the Cooper straight. So does that give Damien Harrington a chance? No, I don't think he's quite close enough in towards the left-hander. Although very wide there was Ross Billison in second place. Maybe just his preferred line, but um, it did look to the eye a little bit wide through 30. So maybe trying very hard to catch up with Joe Thompson. But in doing so, that might again put him under a little bit of threat from the car behind, which it will now do because Mike Jordan gets a good run by the looks of it on towards the Brabham straight. He pulls out the toe, which is always not really the best thing to do but he wants to get some cool air into the uh, front of that car and also try and make a move on Ross Billison. He goes for the high line to the corner, try to get the cut back, but it doesn't really work on this occasion. So uh, again, Ross Billison is very quick to the inside to defend. And with Mike Jordan trying to attack, he is now being pounced on from behind because Damien Harrington, can he get that car all the way around the outside of Druid? Yes, he can. He gets the inside down towards Graham Hill Bend and it will be, by the looks of things, a change for the final step on the podium. So Harrington is back through. Can he now set his sights and try and attack the back of Ross Billison? And if he can manage to get his way through, is there any chance of him trying to catch up with the number 80 machine of race leader Joe Thompson? Well, they're only going to have four minutes to go as they cross the line just under, as Mike Jordan takes a huge amount of curve there. I think it was legal. He kept pretty much all of the uh, the tyres on the track or the kerb rather than onto the grass. So Mike Jordan trying every little trick in the book and trying to take as much of the circuit as he possibly can as now Damien Harrington goes for the second place on Ross Billison he tries for an outside move he might try and get the cut back as they head through Paddock Hill Bend this has been one of the prime overtaking positions in the race so far and in the 7S is we're about to have a potential change for the lead as well because Fraser Hag all of a sudden has Philip Annin to worry about as that car got very loose through the midpoint of Paddock Hill Bend so the back end stepped out a little bit of a oversteer moment there for Fraser Hag 
and as they turn out of Druids, now Phil Annin might be looking to defend because Matthew Ayres has found his way back past Michael Winkworth. That came on that previous lap and now Matthew Ayres quite determined to get ahead and stay as close as possible to Fraser Hack. And this is of course all important for the championship to try and take uh, as many points away from this weekend as possible for the number 700 machine. Joe Thompson up towards the line once again. 16 laps completed for him. And then seven S's just now coming through in towards Clark Curve. Fraser Hack uh, looks like he's got a little bit more of an advantage this time. But that very quickly eroded last time round. And it's going to happen again, I think, as Phil Annan picks, picks up a lovely toe on the run down towards Paddock Hill Bend. But Fraser Hack has a, a real knack, doesn't he, of just managing to place that car in the right position and, and make it... Uh, double the width that the uh, the Mini actually is. So Fraser Hack has got this down to a T. Did a great job, as we said earlier in the season at Thruxton, when we saw them on the BTCC package. And we've got a great scrap going on further down in the 7Ss. This is the one we were talking about uh, before we had the safety car, which it involves, again, uh, some of the 7s. Uh, car number 14 is involved in that one, which is Jamie Payne. But it's, uh, it's pretty much looking to be for fifth place. So again, Arnold Duncan in the brown machine. I think that's now gone up the road, doesn't it? The, uh, the Arnold Duncan car. Yeah, is, is long gone, just going through 30s now, and then it's the fight further back. So that involves uh, what's going to be, by the looks of things, the 707 machine, isn't it, of Matthew Page, and also in there as well, look out for Ollie Burkett. That's the uh, green and white machine, which is uh, trying his best to hold on to them around, but just seems to be faltering in these latter stages of the race. So I uh, don't think he's going to be inside the top five as it stands, as the seven now steps aside from the uh, not quicker 7Ss, but the drivers seem to be quicker in these cars than the number 14 machine as they head their way down in towards Paddock Hill Bend. 7S lead train in towards Druids. Matt Ayres still on the back of the second place car at the minute, Phil Annin. So let's see if there's going to be anything to be unfurled on these last couple of laps. We've got to keep an eye on the mirror as well behind because Michael Winkworth, who is looking quite racy, he may be able to make a move before too much longer. Michael Winkworth, who has had three wins so far this year, off the podium as it stands. And Fraser Hack in just a handful of races so far this season has, after yesterday, also taken three wins as well. And there's the move from Matt Ayres, lovely down the inside in towards Clearways. It'll be almost a drag race to the line, as I think the sevens have gone through onto the start of the last lap. So the seven S's will get one more as well. Matt Ayres almost being squeezed to the pit wall there, but it's not quite going to happen. So Matt Ayres keeps himself in a very nice uh, formation on the run uh, down towards Paddock Hill Bend. And we'll see how it all comes out the other end. Yeah, so Fraser Hack ahead of Matt Ayres. Michael Winkworth is now up into third position and down into fourth place uh, will be that of Phil Annan. So he's the one who loses out on these last few corners. And it looks like he's been shuffled off the podium as well. So as the 7Ss continue, uh, the 7s are about to come through to take the check of flag because the clock now has ticked to zero. And for Joe Thompson, it's been a perfect race for him. It's been a perfect weekend so far. After starting from the front row of the grid, it looks like he's going to pick up uh, the double. With still one race to come later on this afternoon. And for third place, it's not quite sorted out. We'll get that to the line very shortly. But it's Joe Thompson that wins. Second place goes the way of Ross Billison. And it will just be Damien Harrington by just over a tenth of a second up the road from Mike Jordan. So those two separated by not much whatsoever. Uh, Mike Jordan, in the end, did record the quickest lap of the race there, 59.142. So he was in fourth. Fifth place goes the way of number 21, which is Aaron Smith. And then behind that, we had Spencer Wanstall, which is the last of the sevens inside the top ten. And then we move back to the seven S's, which uh, featured Fraser Hack getting the victory there by just over a tenth of a second. So a lovely double win for Fraser Hack as well here at Brands Hatch so far this weekend. Matt Ayres gets second. It was the championship leader and after the results he's had so far this weekend should still just be in the championship lead third place goes to Michael Winkworth in the seven S's and fourth place uh, to Phil Annin and he finishes in tenth place overall as well so that's how the runners come through uh, a few problems as we said for a few of the drivers that didn't manage to make the end of the race but of course they'll have another chance to go later on this afternoon the final race at what's going to be 20 past five for the Dunlop Mini Challenge supported by Mini Spares with the sevens. And just to uh, run you through the order once again, confirmation that Joe Thompson was your winner. Second for Ross Billison, Damien Harrington third. Mike Jordan, Aaron Smith and Spencer Wanstall go sixth. Fraser Hack with Matthew Ayres and Michael Winkworth and Phil Annan complete the top ten. 
with Stephen Hopper and Arnold Dun Duncan down in 11th and 12th place. Further back from that, we had in 13th position, 741 machine of Joel Wren, 14th for Matthew Page and Oliver Burkett in 15th. Callum Perfect with Giles Page, Bertie Woolard and Jamie Payne. Andrew King completes the top 20 with Dave Reese, Mal Dickinson, John Hobbs and Rob Perry down in 24th place. And then there was just two other finishers by the looks of things. Uh, 25th place went the way of the 733 machine of Alex Watson and a lap down was Kate Fraser Kerr in 26th position. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm sure you're enjoying all the action we've had so far uh, today. We've got a uh, little bit of recovery to be done, as we said, for that car which stopped at the top of Paddock Hill Bend. So that will be the car to be recovered and again uh, taken back to the paddock and I think it did lose its will by the looks of it because the marshals have been just hovering around the uh, gravel trap of Paddock Hill Bend so that uh, wheel has been chucked on the, the flatbed and that car now will be recovered and taken to its paddock and hopefully again it's not going to be too much work to get the, uh, the wheel back on uh, all depends if it's done any further damage uh, to the car whilst it pulled off the circuit. So uh, that is the second race completed for the Dunlop Mini Challenge, supported by Mini Spares. Uh, they'll be, as I said, back out a little bit later on for the third and final race.